फोटोग्राफ so we 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 have known that we can take the photographs from the from the aerial point of view in different angles so if it is vertical then we can uh, we can get a very clear pictures uh, but it can cover a very a small amount of the area on the other hand if it is low oblique or high oblique then maybe some of the portions um, of the photographs cannot be very uh, sharp cannot be very um, clearly seen but we can understand the features uh, of that places and it can cover a wide area so depending on the purpose we can go for each of the different angles for example if it is like the high if it is like high oblique then you can see from these photographs uh some of the areas uh, which is very near to the camera we can see that but but um but the very long distance we cannot understand uh, each of the buildings or each of the land uses but you can understand this is a city area at least so maybe we can we can cover it like what is what are the broad classification we can understand from this one but if it is very close then we can understand the each of the features for example this one so from the vertical aerial photographs we can understand this is road networks and these are the buildings these are some of the vegetation vegetation cover so each of the item can be clearly seen so if it is like we wanted to know each of the features then maybe vertical photograph is very very much necessary but maybe you can also ask me why we don't take vertical photographs every time because it can give us very clear photograph uh, the answer is like if we take vertical photograph each of the time then we need hello okay so maybe maybe it can be also maybe it can be also seen that um uh, that we need to know each of the each of the features of some some places but uh, if we take vertical photographs then it needs many more photographs to cover a place uh, which is not economical and maybe our purpose is not to uh, not to take uh, all the information so what is our purpose that is the main question and depending on that we can select what type of uh geometry we should select for uh this is all about the uh, vertical and high oblique one now we'll try to see some of the some of the uh, fundamentals of the aerial photographs uh, uh to take the image from the aerial point of view so on important thing is nadir n a d i r nadir so nadir is a point Uh, on the ground there is two nadir one is photographic nadir another is ground nadir so from the aerial point of view when i take any when i wanted to take any photographs then if you just think about the lens here can you see my cursor yes so sir this is this is the lens so when i i wanted to take any photographs so vertically beneath the beneath the lens where the where the ray passes one this is very vertical the point which touch the ground that is our ground nadir and when you took the photographs then photographs also uh, photographs the lens uh, which also um, also absorb the reflected lights from the ground that also passes through the lens and finally in, in the photographs so the vertical one which touches the photographs we called it the point is but uh, photographic nadir why nadir is important why we are defined a nadir 
because we wanted to know how much uh, how much angle we are creating from each of the photographs because we wanted to know uh, which is the middle point of this uh, of this intersection uh, as you can see it it cannot be all through the middle of the middle of the photographs because if it is the angle then maybe your your ground nadir may be a little bit uh, left or right that means not in the middle of the uh, middle of the uh, ground or middle of the photographs so depending on your depending on your um, angle you can your nadir will also be changed and this is important because we wanted to know each of the photographs um, where it touches i said you earlier that uh, that that most of the cases that each of the photographs they intersect with another one so if you have two visions from two angles then you can we can count down some ratio and then you can analyze your photographs if it is only one angle and from one angle you wanted to take the one photographs maybe you cannot analyze maybe you don't know the differences between the uh, between the uh, two uh, two different points and you cannot analyze any height or any width of any substances so image image acquisition is very important in that case is that how we wanted to take the photographs um, uh, first of all uh, as we as you learned from the previous slide that we need to know the sharpness that means the pixels or the amount of the brightness of photographs and then now we wanted to know about the um, about the angles because uh, because we we need to cover up the photographs how many photographs can we can take from a particular uh, uh, to cover a particular area and each of the photographs should also also taken two times that means first one and second one so depending on that we can also uh, also do our flight plan uh, before we going there, just uh, uh, just to know about the what do we mean by this type of photograph, uh, uh, this type of photographs. Uh, you know that nowadays we are we are we are just transforming all the analog system to digital uh, digital system. So cameras which are taking the imageries now nowadays it's almost all digital uh, digital aerial uh, digital cameras, and digital aerial cameras are uh, more or less. Uh, Mm, uh, more or less, uh, it is uh, it, if it is an aerial one or it is a ground one. All of them are now transforming to digital format. What does it mean uh, from analog to digital? Digital digital means it is a it is a combination of a system that can record the pixels that can record the uh, photons which is reflected from the ground or emitted from the ground, and finally it can. In can, it can compose um, a discrete bright, brightness uh, to form an image. Does it mean this is a digital format? And this digital format is obviously uh, better than the uh, better than the analog imagery in many cases. However, there are many many cases that some of the uh, some of the scientists or some of the users they also prefer the analog imagery in certain cases, not every cases. So why? Digital uh, digital format is more um, more beneficial than analog system. So first of all, this is a very direct pathway that uh, that can create the system that you can directly analyze your photographs. If it is an analog one, then you have to transform it first analog to digital, and then you have to uh, analyze. Uh, otherwise, if it is a digital one, directly you can use it. So more direct, less amount of the effort you need to analyze your uh, photographs. Secondly, you can store it, um, store it uh, a lot of images in a very single places. Uh, and you need a very a small amount of the storage. Your processing will be very quick and your uh, data transmission will also be quick. So all of these give you the less amount of the prices. Uh, simultaneously, the operational cost also be low in case of digital format rather than analog one. So you can just transmit it, process it, storage it, and also your operation cost. So altogether, your economy is uh, more feasible in digital format. Another important characteristic is, is versatility. So versatility means your product you wanted to you wanted to change, you wanted to modify. 
So digital format is more easy, but your analog system can have a very big amount of the footprint to re remain in there. So that's why versatility, versatility is more, uh, more in digital format rather than the analog one. Um, in the digital format nowadays, you can also see the image, image are more sharp. What does it mean? That means more pixel in a single place. So your brightness will be more in uh, digital format. And you also can cover a multi-spectral coverage. It means uh, the single amount of the changes of the pixels, you can record it and you can, uh, uh, you can, you can take it from the, uh, from, the, uh, from the object. So it can give you more understanding about a single substances. So you can analyze it more, uh, more uh, depth with more depth uh, and you can also know the each of the each of the changes uh, in in between the two uh, particular objects even in the same species you can also uh, analyze analyze the differences for example uh, you if you wanted to know about the about the some of the information about the surface water of the ocean and then maybe very sharp image can give you the understanding what are the different sets of um, changes between the two groups of images on, a, on, a, on the ocean floor. So in the ocean, on the top of the surface, you just take the images and you can also analyze the algae. You can also analyze the geoplankton or phytoplankton remain in there, depending on the, depending on the resolution of your, uh, of your photographs. So multispectral coverage give you this uh, opportunity to, uh, to see the small amount of the changes. Uh, maybe you are interested about the sedimentation of the any, any type of rivers, uh, particularly in Bangladesh, most of the rivers are uh, carrying a huge amount of the silt, uh, silt. So if you wanted to analyze how much sediment has been carried out by a particular river, maybe you need a very sharp images for, or, or to analyze it and a small amount of the changes of the color. Maybe it is gray, but gray, depending on the, depending on the amount of the filtration, maybe your gray, uh, the, the, the gray may be dark, maybe very light, or maybe in between that. So each of the time it changes it uh, color, uh, tone, uh, then you can also understand the amount of the silt that is uh, carried out by the water. Uh, may I ask you, can you, can you understand my, Lectures. Now you, you have to ask me. Sir, can you explain number six, sir, to multispectral coverage? Yeah, yeah, I, I do that. But uh, most, of, most of you, can you understand my uh, lectures? Because I, I cannot see your faces. Uh, so you oh, okay. So let's go from the first. Uh, I, mean, uh, I, I cannot see your faces, so I, <laughs> I, I, I thought you, you can understand. So you have to tell me that you can understand or not. Okay. So if you don't understand, just raise your question. No problem. Ah, so Nadir, <clears throat> if you see, this is, a, this is a ground. This ground, I wanted to take the photographs. This is a single photograph. And this is my photographic plate. Where it is? inside the camera, back of the camera. And this is our lens. That means front of my camera. And now if you take a photographs, so when you are taking the photographs, um, the vertical beneath of these lenses, if you just draw a line very sharp vertically, it touches a point of the ground. And this is your nadir of the ground. So now the question is, why it changes because it is vertical uh, vertically taken can you can you see this one it is very uh, very vertical so now if you little bit changes the angle maybe your angle is you wanted to take the photographs from a 30 degree angle from here somewhere here then your sharpness of your angle will be changed little bit but your vertical line maybe maybe not changes from the center of the lenses. So vertical beneath the center of the lenses, which touches the ground, that is your ground nadir. It is important because, uh, because each of the photographs in the, in, in the couple of slides after, we will see 
that when we wanted to take each of the photographs to cover a certain area, then we need to also select the nadir. But the same point we wanted to see the in, in the two um, conjugate or, or simultaneous uh, photographs. So that's why nadir is important. And similarly, the photographic nadir that also touches the vertical line from the lenses to the top of the, uh, on, on, the, on, the on the photographic plate. Uh, that means your image negative, you can, you can touch uh, the, the, the light that touches vertically in there. That is your photographic nadir. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And now someone asked me that multispectral coverage. Multispectral coverage means um, from each of the each of the pixel you can differentiate. So the more uh, more pixels you have, you can you can get more um, uh, more information from a single sources. So a small amount of changes can also be uh, also be found from this image. So digital digital system can give you this opportunity to find out more and more uh, multispectra, and this is your true multispectral. That means you are looking for, for example, looking for visible light. So you are taking some you are taking some information which is which you need to know very minutely. Uh, most of the cases we don't need it. For example, if you go for the land use classification, you may not need so much uh, high spectral photographs. It, it, you can you can know this is a building. You can know this is water, and you can know this is uh, forest or grassland very easily by a very normal image. But if you wanted to know about the changes of each of them, for example, you wanted to know about the changes of the uh, does it uh, does the um, uh, does it uh, 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 this 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 leaf is uh, conifers or is it a broad leaf? If you wanted to differentiate it, maybe you need a very high resolution. Maybe you wanted to know about a cornfield or cropland. So maybe it is rice. Maybe it is another type of uh, crops. So you wanted to differentiate it. In that case, you need a very high amount of the information and multispectral coverage give you that opportunity. Uh, uh, so it, uh, it give you the opportunity, uh, it, it, it give you the opportunity to find out more and more information in a single place. So that is your, uh, that is your chances uh, to get more information in the digital system. So this is beneficial and advantages over the uh, analog imagery. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, little bit of disadvantages, although we don't actually, yes, please. Any question? No, okay. So um, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the disadvantage group, maybe it's, it's uh, we can overlook it, but uh, just to know uh, what type of uh, what type of things we are doing. Um, so in in disadvantages, maybe uh, some of the experts they considered that uh, uh, if you wanted to if you wanted to maintain your geometry and radiometry, uh, maybe uh, it is inferior a little bit uh, than uh, in in digital system rather than the high quality of uh, analog metric cameras. Uh, so this is some experts consideration it's not uh, very uh, uh, very widely widely uh, widely mentioned or widely understandable things secondly um, uh, typically we need to when we go for the digital system maybe we can we just say oh it is we can take many many pictures so let's do it so we can maybe have more and more pictures for a single uh, reason on the other hand, if it is an analog system, maybe we are very sharp, we are very careful, and then we can go for only only a couple of uh, uh, photographs for a single purpose. So more footprints is in digital images rather than the analog one. Then uh, it also uh, also some uses some cases some sensor models uh, that are less widely supported. That means if you are taking some digital system in particular using some models, 
So it may be possible that it cannot also support it in other photographic software. So it might be possible sometimes. Also, it needs high initial investment in digital system. Uh, so you have to uh, you have to invest a lot uh, very fast. But later maybe it is very cheap, and there is less inherent stability. So in 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 case of digital photographs, so you just take it and you you wanted to delete it, you wanted to take again, and thus it's very versatile. So maybe maybe it also. Uh, sometimes it is very um, give you uh, less amount of the instability. Uh, sorry, stability. And finally, calibration. So, in case of analog system, uh, we do have some calibration system from the company. It it has been made. So they give the calibration process very easily, and you can handle it. Uh, in digital system, normally you don't need to calibrate, but sometimes maybe it needs some component if it is just altered or changes, then you need a calibration and it is quite uh, uh, quite, a quite little bit uh, difficult to control the quality. So does a couple of uh, disadvantages we can, we, can, we can list down, but actually we are much more uh, advantages, uh, advantages we can see in digital photo imagery rather than the analog one. Uh, the next topic is band combination. Band combination means uh, how you arrange your color in your images. What type of information, what type of rays or a spectra you wanted to see. So you allow a certain amount of the, um, certain amount or certain types of your rays in your photographs. You know, uh, each of the uh, each of the object that reflect or emit different kinds of uh, different kinds of uh, uh, spectra. Some of them which we can see that is our visible light. Maybe some of them which may not be seen by our open eyes, but that is also important. For example, infrared. In many cases, we take the infrared. Why? Uh, because we need some other information which cannot be. Uh, also possible through only only through uh, black red uh, sorry uh, green uh, uh, RGB that means red uh, uh, red green and uh, blue so that's why that's why sometimes we also need a couple of other images so you allow uh, band combination uh, you you can assign some colors uh, colors that what type of colors you wanted to sense by your sensor so you can just omit some of them and you can take some of them which you desired. So this is called band combination. Uh, and uh, and from, this, uh, from this thing, you can also do it arbitrarily because, because you want, it, it depends on your purpose, what type of information you wanted to know from a particular object. If it is a, like uh, you wanted to see how it look like, then maybe it is natural color, you can go for RGB. But maybe you wanted to know some other information. For example, how much, um, uh, how much um, um, hot or cold of of of, of uh, is this sub is this object, and then what are the infrared that emits from that particular object? So you need to change your band combination. Maybe you don't like to see what is the object is. Maybe your your target or objective is something else. So then you change your band combination. So there are a couple of band combination. One is black and white infrared imagery. So uh, in, in black and white infrared imagery means you, you take your information uh, information through a through couple of channels. So you can do it two ways. One is you can allow infrared with all the other colors, or maybe you can close the other colors, single colors, and then you can only want it to know the uh, near infrared only. So, so it, it gives you a different brightness. It, it's not the same because you, you just filtered your visible portion uh, and then you can only, only pass the uh, near infrared and you can see it. See these two pictures, the first one, the upper one, and second one, the same pictures. Can you see any differences? Hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. So, 
so if you see that top one this is black and white infrared so uh, so we and and the second one it is uh, black and white photographs only so the second one we allow the visible light only the black and white into the channel we we allow the black and white into the channel but we don't allow the infrared in here but the same one if you go for this one you can see see this is also infrared including so black and white plus the infrared that gives us the different different things and the information will also be different maybe you can ask me what is the differences between these two one maybe some brightness and maybe some less amount of the brightness yeah maybe maybe that but you can when you analyze it it's, it doesn't only see how it looks like. Analyze means the information it's gathered by these photographs, you can analyze it. For example, the lower one, maybe you don't know about the temperature of these particular objects, each of them, how much emitted. But from the upper one, you can understand, uh, maybe I, I don't know that meaning of the color, but maybe each of the color sense can give you the idea how much infrared has been emitted from each of the items so in that case maybe you have a chance to know about the uh, about the hot or coldness of each of the object just for example uh, what, what i'm talking about so similarly in this way you can get different information from different types of photographs uh, that's why we need a different type of band combination similarly Another we call panchromatic imagery. So panchromatic imagery means it, it, can, it sets across the colors. So the same, same object you can see left and right. So the right one is black and white infrared. That means you allow infrared in here. On the other hand, the same thing you, uh, uh, the same things, but it's allow a single portion that means in a single channel, it can it can shows all the colors. So panchromatic view provides you the black and white image that is that is the same, but this allow that uh, th that doesn't that doesn't separate the colors. So all the colors uh, that taking from a single channel. So now the question is why we need that? Why we 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 we, we should changes these differences? That's why I tell, told you before that each of the rays can give you a different ideas. Maybe this panchromatic imagery give us the information which is absent from this um, black and white. So, so, so we need to know that each of the uh, band combination, what type of information can give us. And then we can, we can, we can select for our photographic um, uh, plate that which information I will take from my uh, camera. Another band combination is uh, natural color model and false color model. What does it mean? Natural color means what you can see by your open eyes. That means RGB. So red, green, and blue, and their combination is natural color. But, but some, sometimes some of the things we don't, oh, uh, it, it doesn't give us the, same information which we wanted to know or maybe that gives us the information but uh, when you wanted to show to your audience um, uh, then uh, uh, visualize these things to 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 your uh, uh, audience then you need to you need to sharp it and you need to select a different color to make it more attractive or maybe more understandable for example you are taking some uh, for uh, some um, uh, uh, photographs of some water bodies and these water bodies by the by, by, by inherently maybe that that is not blue maybe some other colors now we wanted to show it blue so you are assigning some colors here as blue but but this is not blue because the natural color may not be blue uh, uh, maybe a different color but you wanted to show it blue when you wanted to assign some blue color in here, uh, that is not belongs to that, that water. So it is a false color image. So in many cases in our daily life, we do that. Uh, for example, the, the, uh, when you see something in the television, so, so sometimes 
the televisions, the experts, they changes this color. They changes some natural color to some other colors, like the false color. Maybe sometimes you see some green, 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 more green, or sometimes you can see some more um, red or something. So this is all, all, all are false color because um, particularly maybe that particular things is not so uh, so much green, but you can now see very deep green. That means you assign some colors in there, which is not belongs to that particular object. So that is a false color combination. So band combination give you the idea about what type of color you are assigning for your particular object and how you wanted to show it to the audience. Uh, is it clear to you, band combination? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm, now we need to know uh, how we can um, uh, take the photographs. So, uh, for example, you wanted to take the photographs of the whole Chittagong city area, or maybe bigger than that, maybe the whole Chittagong district. So now you have to plan, okay? So first of all, we know the geometry, we knew the uh, uh, different angles, and now we wanted to know how much photographs I need to take and what would be my flight plan. Uh, so so we, are, we are thinking about to take the uh, take these uh, photographs through, uh, through airplane maybe, or maybe from uh, nowadays we can also use drone. Uh, so any, anything, maybe uh, unmanned, unmanned vehicle also. So we can take some pictures, but before the photographs taking, we need to calculate uh, each of the photographs, how many photographs we need to uh, cover up the area. Uh, maybe you are, you are talking about, uh, you are taking the photographs maybe half a kilometer upper from the, from the ground. And if you wanted to take it with a, for example, 30 degree angle or 15 or five degree angle, so anything you, if you just think about, you can also understand how much area that can be covered up by your each of the photograph. Okay, so now you 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 make a plan, a flight plan. So flight will start from on place, from left to right or right to left, and then it when it moves, it cover up and again come to the same direction, but a little bit wide distance. And how much wide between two lines? And what would be the each of the times in the single line? How many? How many? Uh, how, uh, uh, how can we, we take the photograph? Uh, means uh, I take the photographs every single how many after how many se seconds? It also depends uh, on depends on the amount of the um, area that can be covered up by my image and also the speed of my uh, vehicle. So if it if the speed is very slow, then maybe you you need to take the photographs a little bit delay. But if the speed is very quick, then you have to take the photographs very quickly. And you can take it manually or you can take it automatically. Uh, that is your choice. But automatically gives you automatic uh, uh, things give you more accurate result because if you are taking after every couple of seconds, then maybe you can miss some seconds and then you lose some information. Mm. So now we can go for what amount of the photographs uh, are, 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 are needed by each of the area. So, so to do that, we need to know two things. One is our um, uh, forward overlap, another is side overlap. What does forward overlap? Forward overlap means, this is my first photograph. You see, this is one. And our flight line is moving on. So in the second photographs, you can see a little bit, little bit changes, okay? So it covered up uh, more than 50 to 60% of the first photograph. And it's go little bit up, little bit forward. And also little bit left, you see, is a little bit portion of this one and little bit loose of this portion, okay? Uh, just to see you, just to show you. So in when my flight line is moving on, we are taking these photographs to cover up 
uh, at least 50 to 60 percent of each of the frame so this one cover up that one up to 60. why because in the next one when we cover up then it can also again take the second one that means the second photographs uh, 50 to 60 percent why because because when you take uh, the information between two angles then you can make a relationship and then um, then you can you, you can you can uh, analyze the photograph information otherwise it might be difficult uh, difficult so single photographs cannot give you the all the information uh, like the height wide you cannot understand it uh, but maybe you can understand what is the things in there maybe you can you can only know that one but you cannot understand the height or the length or the width or the depthness of any substances. So that's why uh, we need to cover up 50 to 60%. This is a forward overlap. On the other hand, we also need to know the side overlap. That means each of the photographs uh, also cover up the next one, uh, how much uh, of the side one. So you see the second photographs of this one, this also cover a little bit. So that's why uh, we take it because if it is very sharp from this point, then maybe we will lose between two, uh, some of the information between two. So that's why side, side overlap can give five to 15% to not to lose any type of information uh, by the side. So that's why we, we, we make this adjustment. Now there is another point that we need to also know the conjugate point, conjugate principal point. What does it mean? See this picture. So this is one picture. This is another picture. So in the in the in the lower one, you can see the middle portion. If we just uh, draw a line between two middle portion, so you can get middle point. So this is the conjugate. Uh, this is a, a point of the first picture. Now when the when the second picture is go on, you know the second picture is moving little bit forward. So it is maybe. 50% or 60% overlapped and, and 5 to 15% side overlap. If we just take the same point from the first one and second one, the same point. So these two points we called conjugate principal point. And maybe in the second one, it is very near to any border. The first one, it is in the middle, but same point, if we take another picture because it is moving one, so it can cover a little bit further area and the backward area. So altogether, it, it goes a little bit the side of each of the photographs. So this is the point which belongs to middle in the first photograph. So both the thing when, when come together, so we called it, uh, this is a conjugate principal point, okay? Uh, so that's why it is, uh, why it is important. It is important because uh, because uh, because you wanted to know which point is covered up by what type of photographs and which photographs can give you the same places uh, in other photographs. So in the second one, there is also a middle point. And in the third one, the next one, maybe, maybe that the same point of the middle one that will also come to very end of the third photograph. So in this way, each of the photographs, we need to know the conjugate principal point. And from the con conjugate principal point, we also can measure some of the information. So now our flight plan has been confirmed. Now we need to know the, uh, so you can see this is our flight. A flight is moving on and our forward overlapped. And also sometimes, sometimes during, uh, Sorry, uh, I have a call. Sorry. Okay, so you can you can you can see when the flight is moving on. So cross sometimes the wind can also little bit changes the uh, uh, change the shake the flight. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe not. So if it is changes a little bit shaky, then your uh, flight will also be motivated a little bit left and right. And then uh, there is a chance that some information will be missed. On the other hand, sometimes the flight, uh, flight also go a little bit down and up, depending on the pressure 
on the uh, from the from the air so that we call drift so these changes uh, these changes of the flight uh, flight uh, also hampers the hampers the flight plan and also hampers the acquisition of the images so now now you can see crosswind can change little bit the direction of the plane and then uh, you can understand your photographs will also not be in a, in, a, in a same thing same way so we called it sometimes crap okay so conjugate principal point principal point all together we can we can take the photographs however there are many many cases uh, uh, depending on the depending on the situation uh, we are we are trying our best but sometimes some information may not also be captured depend uh, due to due to various types of problems and the gap which we cannot uh, gather the information we called it holiday so holidays means the information which we cannot capture from the from our uh, from our photographs because it can be it can be gap can be happened uh, due to faultiness of the equipment uh, maybe uh, yeah, maybe your 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 certain uh, things is not working properly uh, maybe navigation errors you you can choose a path and that is tilted or maybe sometimes cloud cover so your plane is top of your cloud and due to cloud maybe you cannot see something so in this way there are some uh, uh, gap can be created and we need to focus it and we need to change it, changes uh, we need to take the information again of, of, of that gaps and sometimes we take it uh, through some other ways uh, only planning for a couple of couple of areas photographs not all over the things again and again uh, how many photographs we are needed for a particular places we can uh, we can we can calculate that very easily uh, so so there is a formula like um, number of the photographs uh, that depends on the length of the flight line that means how long how long each of the flight line and then ground distance of the photo that means uh, how much it cover and that is multiply by one minus overlap that means how much percentage you wanted to overlap 50 percent or 60 percent okay and ground distance can be uh, uh, can be calculated represented in a single frame uh, measured in the same units as the length of the pl uh, flight plan so it, if it is a meter then you can also come to meter so total flight line divided by ground distance of the photographs multiplied by one minus overlap so just a quick understanding if you have your pen and paper with you you can just you can just do this for this calculation uh, flight line is planned for 33 mile so this is your flight line 33 mile and each of the photographs is planned to represent 3.4 mile on a side so ground distance of the photo is 3.4 okay and we see the forward overlap at 60 percent so you can say 0 0.60 this is your uh, uh, this is your forward lap then how many photographs are required can you can you just quickly do the calculation using this formula this one all of you just try it's very easy just uh, you can you can you can know how many photographs can be needed for so your length of the flight is 33 mile and your ground distance is 3.4 and your overlap is 60 percent can anyone give me the result please yeah, do about 25 so 24.26 okay yes sir 24.26 sir okay 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 so every everyone should do that <coughs> very easy so everyone should do that just put this one 33 divided by 3, 4, multiply 1 minus 6.60. So all of you do, do did that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So yes, 24 point something. So 24 point something means, uh, so photographs cannot be cut down. So you have to take the full one. 
So you have to take 25 photographs to cover all the area. So you, 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 you should know it because, because 24.26 means uh, more than 24, but photographs, if you wanted to take all the information, so it cannot be 24. If it is 24, then maybe you lose some information. So you need a little bit more. So that's why it is 25 photographs. So in one flight line, if you just cover up 25 photographs, maybe all the, all the area, now you can understand how much, uh, for, uh, how many photographs uh, will be needed for a particular area. So now in Chittagong area, if you have all the, all the information that how much, what is the length, what is the uh, wideness, and what is the area that can cover up the by the Chittagong city, uh, Chittagong city, then you can uh, you can make a plan for yourself also. So this is the way how we uh, how the photographs can be taken for aerial uh, you know, image acquisition. Uh, now photogrammetry. So photogrammetry means. I think you are free, no? I can continue. Yeah, Siam? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so photogram it. Do you need any break or I, I should go on? I should go on maybe uh, within a couple of, uh, let's let's see. Okay, uh, so photogrammetry, uh, photogrammetry means uh, this is a system or the knowledge that can give you all the information that how can you, uh, how can you measure the uh, measure your uh, choices, measure your information, or you can analyze it. So photogrammetry means those knowledges that you need to analyze the information. And uh, you need to also know the uh, how, how each of the photographs can give you the information. That means uh, what would be the angle and depending on the angle, how can you get the information all together all the information which can be found from a system that is we call this photogrammetry and we need it. And this photogrammetry also provide us the information that uh, uh, that uh, uh, what is the logic behind the uh, behind this process and how we can also understand the differences between two points. It can be uh, how, what is the distance between two horizontal point what is the difference between two vertical point? That means height of a certain objects. So it all depends on some logics and all together when we control it, when you can, uh, uh, when you wanted to analyze it, that all, all these signs known as photogrammetry. So among the photogrammetry, the first thing is stereoscopic parallax. Uh, stereoscopic parallax, so I, other day I also gave you the information that uh, if you have two photographs of the same area from the different points of view, uh, and maybe from the different angles or maybe different positions, then you can make some, you can make some uh, calculation. You can make some logics. For example, if you are taking a photographs with uh, uh, two, two, two meter away and another photograph from three meter away, the ratio, the size uh, between, uh, for a single object, the size will be changed. And this will be changed because you are, you are changing your positions. And it can be, it can be very, um, yeah, and it is, it is very obvious and it is very uh, fixed in nature. So if you just have this information all together, one by one, one by one, and make a ratio, then you can has a, have a chronological uh, point that if you change your positions and angles, what would be your uh, what would be your um, result? What would be your next uh, sizes of your photographs? What would be your next uh, information from the photographs? So that that changes of the positions or perspective, we called it a stereoscopic parallax, and we do use it in our photographic plate because. Uh, as you saw before, that we are taking the pictures from the same same ground. We are taking two pictures. Uh, so, so, so we took two pictures uh, because of with the sixty percent overlap, so that we can make a stereoscopic parallax. We can make some deep uh, perspective. We can have some 
same information between two points so that we can have a logic and we can use it because the logics are fixed. So if we can know that the height of my plane, if you can know the angle, and then you can you can know the your perspective altogether, then you can just altogether you can give this logic to the model and model will give you the answer. So thus a stereoscopic parallax is the main one by which we can know the differences of the photographs uh, of the same places, uh, same places, but taking the photographs uh, from, uh, from two different perspectives. Okay, so just a quick understanding. See these two pictures. Uh, you can see in the first uh, left one, in the left one, it is more or less little bit left way we are taking some photographs. So here the trees can be seen very clearly, uh, but in the in the right one, the, some of the portion of the trees cannot be seen, but the left one, this portion can be seen very, very, very clearly because it is more or less vertical through the line. On the other hand, these pictures are taking little bit left side and the, the, the photographs can be a little bit, no information of this portion, but we can have some other portion here and other portion here. So, so now, for example, this pillar and this pillar, you can see these two one, but the angles are different. So de depending on that, the same positions, if the angles are now changing, but not distance, then what would be the length or what would be the size between here to here and here to here, between here to here. So if, if there is a logic we can set up uh, from a successive pictures, we can understand also the height of each of the instrument, uh, each of the objects. So, so does this information can give you the opportunity to know, uh, know the differences, uh, differences. And these differences are your information. These differences we wanted to know. So depending on the stereoscopic parallax, we can know the height of the any hill or maybe, uh, maybe the depthness of the cloud or maybe some other things also. So, so, so thus it, it is very important in, in, in case of the uh, image uh, analysis. And, and to go there before we need to know what would be our different perspectives from how much, how much differences we, we need uh, to take the photographs. Does it uh, need for five degree angles? Does it, uh, uh, does it allow uh, for example, sixty percent overlap or more or less. So depending on your depending on your information you need, you can change your uh, change your plan and you can take the photographs from different perspectives. Uh, so 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 the stereoscopic parallax is the main thing that gives us the basis of the measuring any distance of the height, as I said before. So distance and height means, you can know the height of any any things, and 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 from that height you can also analyze the depth. So at least fifty percent you need to do that because you need same information between two pictures. But sixty percent is common, so fifty five percent or sixty percent would be better to not to lose any information. Uh, how it can do it depends on many many things. I am not going for there. Uh, but before that, uh, before that, you can also get some ideal photographic information from different sources. Uh, maybe uh, some, um, uh, th there are some information you can also get from here. This is very old information. You can now getting more and more things. So I think I should stop here and maybe in the next class, we can go for uh, the image uh, interpretation maybe. So now if you have any, any question, you can ask me regarding to this class. Sir, can you check the message part, sir? Sir, one of our students asked a question in the message. Mm -hmm. Sir, the name Nadir, how did it came? Ah, uh, I don't know actually. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Nadir. Uh, Nadir is all about... Uh, uh, Nadir is all about the positions, how it made. 
So yes, uh, but how it came from, I don't know actually. Does it very important? I don't know. So what is your main main question? I, I, I cannot get that. Do you want to know something else? Uh, oh, okay, just asking, okay. So I, I, I'll, I'll try to find out it, oh, how it came from, maybe, maybe I'll see that later. Uh, yeah. Anything else? No question. Okay. No, sir. Sir, when is our next class? Sir, we will do our next class. When you will be free, I'll yeah. I can take. Sir, we are free, sir. We don't have any fixed schedules for doing online classes. Uh, so let's do it tomorrow. Okay, sir. Uh, tomorrow maybe same time. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, maybe I I, I just um, how, what are the things I, I it remains so. Uh, how many classes I have taken already? Maybe five or six, seven classes, maybe no? Yes, sir, something like that. Okay, so uh, image interpretation, I maybe I need uh, three classes for image interpretation. Yes. Sir. And then, um, then uh, satellite imagery, maybe another two or three classes, okay? Yes. Sir. So, so altogether, maybe I need another five class. So uh, after that, you'll be free. You can, you can go on and your exam can be gone. And I said, after the image interpretation, I'll take your, I'll take your tutorial. Okay, so this is important. This acquisition, image acquisition is important. And then the next class, which will be carried on tomorrow, then uh, the interpretation is also important. And these two are the main basic things. So, I will take this. Uh, uh, okay, you, if you if you if you can cover up these two, then we can go for the tutorial. And I will take one tutorial, and maybe uh, Alamin sir will take two. Uh, Siam, also, can you just uh, a quick look that uh, who are present in here or who are not present in here? You can give me any roll numbers, present or uh, absent then i can just count down it okay okay sir i can give in google classroom sir uh, thank you thank you thank you very much okay so thank you all joining me and hopefully you will come back tomorrow okay sir. Allah. 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 Allah.